During the 1970s and 1980s, NASA worked on an experimental aircraft research project that examined short takeoff and landing technology. Thus, the quiet, short-haul research aircraft was born, a strange-looking plane made up of salvaged parts from other programs. Unlike other experimental aircraft, NASA's air fleets are primarily used to obtain data with some of the most cutting-edge technology in the world through testing, not design and production. Because of this, the organization strives to cut costs as much as possible, and using old parts sometimes comes at the expense of the vehicle's appearance. The QSRA, with its four giant Lycoming turbofans, was no exception. Although it was not the most pleasant aircraft to look at, the QSRA was the center of hundreds of successful research flights and experiments, including a four-day stint on the California coast. It also performed dozens of landings aboard the USS Kitty Hawk without any kind of arresting gear, putting its STOL capabilities on the edge. Research Facilities The primary mission of all of NASA's research aircraft is to collect data. Just as wind tunnels and flight simulators are considered test facilities within NASA, all aircraft used to gather data are also officially referred to as facilities in the organization. As far back as its inception in the late 1950s, NASA has conducted numerous research projects with powered lift planes. By the 1970s, NASA developed its first augmented jet flap STOL research airplane, capable of taking off and landing both vertically and in short runways. The facility, which completed over 500 hours of highly successful flight data, consisted of a strategically modified de Havilland C-8A Buffalo powered by two Rolls-Royce Spey engines. A second, more ambitious project soon followed, and it was called the Quiet Experimental STOL Airplane. However, this endeavor was canceled before contracts were awarded due to budgetary limitations. In January of 1974, NASA embarked on a third STOL research aircraft with austere budget modifications, very low sideline noise levels, and next-generation performance. The project was named Quiet Short Haul Research Aircraft, or QSRA, and its data would allow the United States aircraft industry to further their design criteria and knowledge, establishing certification criteria for advanced STOL aircraft. In addition, the obtained information would lead to improved air transportation at reduced noise levels, with less air traffic congestion. NASA then set the total funding for the QSRA at $29 million, including all studies, testing, engine and airframe procurement, and proof-of-concept flight tests. Every scientist involved in the project agreed not to raise the cost. This decision allowed design compromises between research capability and cost. The contractor was even encouraged to suggest ideas using salvaged equipment from other aircraft, intending to maximize the aircraft's capabilities while remaining within budget. Later that same year, Boeing and Lockheed were given design contracts. According to NASA documents, the teams were instructed to study, quote, an augmented jet flap concept and a hybrid upper surface blowing concept. Each design team operated independently, and only at an industry-wide conference at the end of the study was the work of one team revealed to the other. In this way, NASA was able to obtain two independent approaches to the problem. A request for proposal for detailed design, fabrication, and testing was issued in November of 1974, and over a year later, Boeing was awarded the hardware contract after their proposition to use the airframe of De Havilland C-8A. The Buffalo's physical size and configuration, as well as NASA's previous experience with its earlier modifications, were two main reasons for choosing the winning proposal. QSRA The agreements reached during the planning period resulted in an austere aircraft capable of research and data gathering. According to the Quiet Short Haul Research Aircraft Familiarization document published by NASA in November of 1979, quote, the Quiet Short Haul Research Aircraft is designed to demonstrate quiet propulsive lift technology in a configuration that realistically represents a practical and efficient high subsonic cruise transport. As the emphasis is on terminal area operation, the airplane is fixed in the low speed configuration, with the leading edge devices deployed and landing gear locked down. Virtually no attempt has been made to reduce drag for cruise performance, although to make the airplane more representative of commercial transport, it incorporates such fuel conservative features as a high aspect ratio, moderately swept wing, a supercritical airfoil, and a high-performance inlet without acoustic rings. The QSRA used a de Havilland C-8A Buffalo fuselage and landing gear, obtained for free from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, as NASA wanted to minimize the project's cost as much as possible. The empennage and gear were modified for powered elevator operation and fitted with SAS actuators. New configuration details included an advanced flight control system with electrically commanded fly-by-wire spoilers and flaps, and an airborne flight test instrumentation system installed in the aft cabin. 
Another critical step regarding the facility's modest expenses was the engines. NASA subsequently salvaged six Lycoming YF-102 engines, four accessory power packages, and other miscellaneous components from a cancelled program, and the recovered parts were extensively refurbished and updated by the Lewis Research Center. Although the YF-102 engines were relatively immature prototype engines, this type was almost ideal for the QSRA. These high bypass ratio geared fan engines could generate 7,500 pounds of thrust at low noise levels. During repairs, the upgrades on the engines included a fan containment ring, combustor case high pressure air bleed ports, oil coolers, and improved shafting material. They were then mounted above the wing to take advantage of the Coanda effect, the tendency of a fluid jet to remain attached to a convex surface. Due to its data research nature, the aircraft was only configured with seats for a pilot and a co-pilot. It would not take observers. However, the QSRA could carry an additional experimental payload in the cabin area. Measurements The QSRA made its maiden flight on July 6, 1978, departing from Boeing Field in Seattle on its way to Payne Field in Everett, northern Washington, launching the first 17-and-a-half-hour flight test program. Although the primary objective that day was to demonstrate the airworthiness and capability of the aircraft and its systems, the last two hours of the flight were devoted to internal and external noise measurements. This initial flight was accomplished one month ahead of schedule, allowing time to deliver the aircraft for trial tests in August instead of September, as initially planned. To measure the data during the trials, the QSRA had a state-of-the-art flight test instrumentation system, or FTIS. According to the Quiet Short Haul Research Aircraft Familiarization Document's first revision, published in September of 1981, quote, The QSRA is equipped with a high-speed data system comprised of transducers, signal conditioning equipment, a telemetry transmitter, and a tape recorder. The system measures, transmits, and records significant airplane parameters for real-time or after-the-fact analysis. The system included numerous sensors and transducers, including thermocouples, pressure transducers, string gauges, servos, potentiometers, and accelerometers, which measured several different parameters. According to NASA, quote, The data from the transducers are transmitted to the analog and digital network panels, which provide the necessary signal conditioning. The conditioned data then passes to the remote multiplexer digitizer units, which adjust the gains to a programmed level, provide analog to digital conversion, and encode the data in a pulse code modulation serial bitstream. The data was then recorded on a standard 14-track airborne magnetic wideband FM tape recorder. Trials After a thorough inspection, NASA approved the second phase of the program. This began in November of 1978 at the Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley. NASA claimed that several of the technical disciplines and capabilities tested in the trials included, quote, aerodynamics, propulsion, stability and control, handling qualities, avionics and flight control systems, acoustics, loads and structures, operating systems, human factors, trailing vortex phenomena, and airworthiness slash certification criteria. As the experiments went on, the engineers in the project improved and modified the aircraft as required. Researchers from various organizations at Ames Center and other NASA hubs participated in the experiments, which included high-speed wind tunnel tests to study the problems associated with efficient cruise performance of QSRA-type propulsive lift configurations. NASA intended the QSRA to be a facility with benefits for the entire nation, so the organization invited investigators from industry, academics, and other government agencies to propose and participate in in-flight experiments while they also ran their own research. In late 1979, the U.S. Navy opened discussions with NASA for a possible joint effort to obtain data from STOL aircraft's performance aboard carriers for future Navy use. NASA agreed, and Phase 1 of the project began in the spring of 1980 at NASA's Ames Research Center. The Navy team consisted of two pilots, a landing signal officer, and two flight test engineers. For weeks, the joint squad worked in selecting approach parameters and other calculations for the actual sea trials. By early July, NASA and the Navy were ready for Phase 2, as the QSRA arrived by ferry to Naval Air Station North Island in San Diego. The sea trials began on July 10, 1980, aboard the USS Kitty Hawk supercarrier, located 100 nautical miles southwest of the city. During the four days of trials, the QSRA performed unarrested landings and free deck takeoffs from the USS Kitty Hawk, while being flown by three pilots of different backgrounds. In total, the QSRA accomplished 25 low approaches, 37 touch-and-go landings, and 16 full-stop landings without the use of catapults or arrestor gear. According to the official results, quote, The optimum QSRA landing parameters determined during the shore-based program proved satisfactory during operations aboard ship. The recovered data from the two phases allowed the organizations to examine the application of advanced propulsive lift technology in naval aircraft carriers, completing the facility's purpose as part of the NASA experimental aircraft team. 
The last public appearance of this strange-looking aircraft occurred in 1988 at the Airspace America Air Show in San Diego. And as of 2021, it is stored at its birthplace, NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Don't forget to hit the like button and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, please subscribe and turn on your notifications to be the first to know about our newest content.